Income tax, 2022-2023. Rental property, renting part of property, and change to rental use tax software examples. Let's do some wealth preservation with some tax preparation. Here we are in our example form 1040 populated with Lacert tax software. You don't need tax software to follow along, but it's a great tool to run scenarios with. You can also get access to the form 1040 related forms and schedules at the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Starting point, single filer, Mr. Anderson, 90210 Beverly Hills. We're just going to have the rental income flowing through at the 100000 to start out with. That's coming from, of course, the Schedule E, which is the supplemental income and loss from rental real estate, so on and so forth. Basically formatted in an income statement structure, rental income minus rental expenses. Bottom line here, the 100000 which in essence pulling into Schedule 1, which is pulling into page 1, Form 1040. And we've got the standard deduction, 12950 giving us the taxable income, 87050 Tax calculated, page number 2, total tax, 14774 Okay, so now we want to run a support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Situation where we have a more complex situation where we have a piece of rental property that let's start out with is partially for business use I'm partially for rental and we partially use it for personal or possibly live in it for personal. Then we're going to have a situation where some of the expenses we're going to have to break out. So this is kind of more of a bookkeeping type of thing that you could think about. So if we had basically our, our general income statement, we might have rental income, for example, and let's say the rental income is uh, 8,000 uh, let's let's say it's going to be equal to 750 times 12. Let's say it was 9,000 of the rental income. Let's put that on the outside. And then we've got our expenses. So I'll say expenses, expense, expenses. And then let's say that we have the mortgage interest. And let's first think about the total expenses and then we'll have to break them out between rental and uh, personal. So let's say the total mortgage interest is 1,800. Let's say we have a fire insurance. Let's say that's 100. Let's say we have miscellaneous uh, repairs on uh, the, let's say we have uh, miscellaneous repairs rental rental and then let's say we have real estate taxes of one two zero zero let's say we have and so let's say that's the total so total expenses expenses is going to be then the uh five uh total expenses let's sum them up here so what let me do this again i had I had mortgage interest, fire insurance, miscellaneous repairs, 291, total experience, summing that up, boom. So there we have that. Let's actually pull this back into the middle and let's put an underline here and that would give us a net income of this minus this. However, I, I'm using it partially for personal use. So I'd have to figure out my personal use. Now the, the income is just going to be from rental property. It's going to be some of these expenses that I might have to break out between business and personal. How might we do that breakout? We might do something like a, a ratio analysis. So we might say something like 
we, we could take the square footage or whatever would be reasonable square footage is common or the rooms compared to the total number of rooms. So let's say that the, the rental is, uh, uh, let's say 300 square feet and the total, uh, total square feet, square feet for the place is 1200, 12, hundred equals 300 over 1200 percent that would be 25 percent so here's our percent rental so the percent rental 25 percent so then i'm going to say okay we need to to break out the personal versus the rental here so let's make this one a little smaller and let's say this is rental let's say personal and rental and I'll make that our header let's actually pull this down a bit I'm going to select these and insert above it right click insert I know I'm doing this fast but it's not an excel course so I don't want to did I spell personal right I doubt it of course not that doesn't look right idiot what am I change it change it make it right all right, and then we're gonna say this is gonna be black and white and center it. And so we'll say for the, for the income, it's all rental. Cause obviously we didn't get income from the personal side. I'll indent these two just so we can see it a little more clear. Indent that. But then on the expenses, we're gonna have a breakout. So, so it's gonna be 25% rental so i'm going to say this is going to be equal to this times the 25 percent boom so the personal side of it is going to be this minus this or it's going to be this times 0.75 however you want to calculate it fire we're going to assume that's for the whole place same thing then it's going to be this times 25 percent for the rental, the personal will be the difference then. And then the miscellaneous I said was on the rental itself. So if it's on the rental itself, I'm just gonna say that's part of the rental property. I don't have to break it out because I did repairs to the rental part of the property, not on the personal. So there's no breakout necessary as there is for these expenses, which are for the full property, which we then needed to break out. And then the real estate, I'm going to say is equal to this times the 0.25 and personal is this minus this. So there's our breakout. Let's put some underline here. So my net income on the rental is really going to be this. Min I need to sum up the expenses. Sum up the expenses. Boom. So my net income is going to be something like this minus that uh the 7 934 here as a, as opposed as opposed to this amount we also have to deal with the depreciation we might touch on in a second but also note that some of these items like the mortgage interest this personal side of the mortgage interest i might still get a benefit from because i might be able to deduct on the schedule a same with the real estate taxes but so it would be a breakout between schedule E and A. So the total, let's put the total over here just so we can see, make sure that my totals match up for these two. So the total still tie out to these totals. So that looks good. All right, so let's go ahead. I'm gonna, I'm gonna enter this data then into the system. So we'll say, okay, let's imagine this was our rental income statement. Let's go to the schedule e and i'm going to say that we had a rental income of nine let's say nine thousand so this is what we would have thus far uh, we don't have the depreciation on there yet but we've got the the income statement then being populated the rents minus the portion of the expenses that are allocable to the rental property to get down to the net amount which was that 7934. Now the amounts for mortgage interest and and property taxes aren't going to help me if I'm just 
having the standard deduction, but if they're significant enough to push us over to itemizing, then we might have to break those out into the itemized deductions, meaning you're going to have to take that mortgage interest statement and break it out according to the to the ratio between those two possible deductible items. So if I said we had the schedule A then, we're going to say the mortgage interest, uh, let's go to the interest is, we said on the personal side, uh, one three, mortgage interest one three five zero, oh, and then the taxes we said was 900. So taxes, we're going to say on the real estate was 900. Now that's not going to be enough to kick me over the standard deduction, which in this case is the 12,950, but that mortgage interest and the property taxes as well as possibly state taxes are usually the thing that could possibly kick people over in that if I looked at the schedule A, if these amounts were greater than the standard deduction, then we'd be able to take those amounts. So we have to think about whether or not uh, we're going to get the benefit from the, the mortgage interest and the real estate taxes and properly allocate them between a Schedule A and a Schedule E. Now, then we would also have to put on the books the uh, depreciation of the property, and we'd have to think about you know, what the cost of the property is. If we purchased it, it would be for more straightforward. If we converted it, then we got to compare our cost basis to, to the fair market value. We got to make sure that we're breaking out building versus out uh, of the land. So let's first just put that on the books. I'm going to say that we have a depreciable item. Now I'm going to indicate to the software that the, the basis is 39,000 for the building and 7,000 for the land. The land is not going to be depreciated. The building will, but it's going to be broken out. 25% of that is going to be the depreciable uh, our component to it. So if I go back on over and I say, okay, what happens with the depreciation schedules? So now it's the cost. Let's go to this one is 39,000. Uh, 25% of that is going to be that 7,000 950 for the depreciable basis because that's the amount I'm assuming is the rental property using uh, our percentage. And then we have the straight line method. It's a mid-month convention, 27.5. This is the rate from the table. Gets us to that uh, 310. And then if you went to depreciation for the next year, you could see it would be uh, 355 and that depreciation is going to continue out for uh, for the 27.5 years, the land not depreciated. So if I go back on over to the schedule E, we have now uh, added the depreciation to our calculation. If I was to do my bookkeeping, then of course, that's something that I would probably need to add to my bookkeeping that will be dependent upon the calculation. By my calculations. From, you know, the tax software to get this number to the bottom line in our tax system, adding you know, the depreciation deduction to our calculation. Now, another scenario that is similar to this scenario is let, let's say that we, we had, I'm going to delete this column, that we had someone that converted their personal property to the rental property. And then they had a partial year of rental in the first year. So now you can have a similar situation with your income statement that needs to be broken out in the portion that is personal versus uh, the business portion that's going to be broken out. So for example, if I if I have these same numbers over here representing this is income, 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 representing the income uh, and expenses for the entire year, then I've got to say, okay, what let's say the income let's let's say the income was actually 11 months of renting let's say it was 750 times 11 so that's going to be the income that we had the expenses down below i'm going to delete these and i'm going to come up with a new ratio analysis it's going to be that months of the year for the rental let's say was only uh was 11 months rental and then we're saying months for personal so let's say it was was one month so 11 this is going to be 
month for rental versus month for personal is uh, one. So that means it's gonna be equal to, so the total months of course is 12. So months in year 12, I'm gonna underline this or un underline. So the amount that's gonna be allocable to the rental is gonna be equal to 11 over 12, the ratio 11 over 12, 91.67% because that because we converted it uh starting at the end of you know in february so you got f 11 months rental one month personal then you've got a similar breakout the rental income is what it is because obviously it, when it was personal we wouldn't have had any rental income and then the the rental side is going to be this times this again i'm going to select f4 so that I could copy that down. However, if I had repairs that were designed just for the rental during the rental time, I'm, I could I could assign that just to the rental side of things. The personal side is going to be this minus this, copying that down, and then I could sum it up, summing up. There's going to be our expenses on uh, that scenario uh, type of situation. So a similar, a similar kind of ratio calculation is is going to be necessary, you know, when that conversion happened. But this time, instead of happening all every year, it would only happen in that first month. And then we've got our, our adjustment here for our rental income, and then our depreciation. We'd have a similar kind of thing for the depreciation, but let's put this into our system. I'm gonna imagine the depreciation is the same, but now I'm not gonna be breaking it out between personal uh, and business use. We're just gonna have that 11 months, which will be calculated by the system because I put it on there. It's gonna use that mid-month uh, convention. So now the depreciation I'm assuming is gonna be that 39,000 again, but we're not allocating between business and personal we're just going to say that we put it on the books, you know, in in the uh, in the first or the second month, which means it's going to use a mid month convention, straight line mid month convention in order to get this time to the 1,241, which is going to pull into the schedule E. So now we've got our calculation here. There's uh, the depreciation calculation. Now, remember that when the conversion happens, because we didn't purchase the property, we might have to do some kind of calculation for what for what our basis is and compare it to the fair market value. And that might look something something like this. We'd say, well, we had the, the, the house cost before we converted it, whenever we bought it, 25,000. And we're gonna say, then we remodeled it. Remodeled kitchen is gonna be 4,200. We'll say when we did that, Recreation room we added was 5,800. Good times in that room. New roof improvement, one six, and patio and deck. We're gonna say 2,400. And so that's where we're getting our adjusted basis in the building, because we broke out building versus the land. The depreciable component is the, 30, the 39,000. We'd have to do some kind of calculation like that, which can be a little bit messy on the personal side of things because the personal residence, you might not be tracking as much of the cost of things that you did because you, you're not getting the benefit of depreciating it at the point in time that it's happening because it's personal side of things. But then when you sell it or convert it, it becomes important because we need to compare this adjusted basis to the fair market value and basically take the lower one.